<laughs> Sunday gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today I'm taking a look at a gun that I first got my hands on back in January at SHOT Show. Speaking of SHOT Show, I am out here in Las Vegas today with QVO Tactical. Obviously I run their holsters for pretty much every gun that I own. One of the cool things about being out here with them is that I have access to all of the firearms in their lineup. For those of you who don't know, they actually purchase every firearm that is in their lineup. That way they can test fit their holsters before they go out to you guys with the real gun. So the gun that I'm taking a look at today, it has definitely received some public Public criticism after its release. Some of the people who picked this gun up right at its release were reporting issues with the firing pin. I'm not really sure if that is going to be an issue today, but we're going to shoot it to find out. So without further ado, let's get into the SIG P365. The P365, SIG's relatively new micro compact designed specifically with everyday carry in mind. This is a striker fired semi-auto double stack chambered in 9mm. The 365 reminds me of a shrunken down 320, making it lightweight at only 17.8 ounces and super easy to conceal while still giving you a decent round count. The gun comes standard with a 10 round mag and also a 12 round extended mag, leaving you with 13 total rounds to work with. On top you will find X-Ray 3 night sights with a bright green front post and tritium vials both front and rear. The slide has very subtle front serrations which of course is a plus in my book and underneath those you will find a SIG rail in the polymer frame where you can technically mount an accessory. The whole package has an MSRP of $600 which is a bit pricey so hopefully this thing brings some value that I just haven't found yet. Now you guys may have seen the video where I already shot this gun. The thing is I only put five rounds through it and still gave you guys my opinion because a lot of people were asking for it. The problem with that is simply that I only was able to shoot five rounds through it. I was out at the SIG range day just before SHOT Show and five rounds through a firearm you can kind of get a taste for, you can hold it in your hand and it was right when it was released so it was cool to actually see this thing be brought to life but at the same time I couldn't really give my full opinion on it. One of the things that people said about this gun when it first released release is that it was going to be a Glock killer. People say this about a ton of different guns, this one specifically targeting the Glock 43. I think the term Glock killer for any gun is pretty stupid and I think some of my friends and most people can agree on that because no matter what comes out, Glock is always going to be around. Could this gun take sales away from the 43? Yes, definitely. But there are also a bunch of other subcompacts out there that do the same. So SIG releasing this gun, which sort of competes with that gun, definitely could have taken a hit on it. But as you guys know, the 43 is not going anywhere. A lot of people own that. I myself own one personally, and I have carried it for a little while. So I just want to get rid of all that Glock killer stereotype that's out there and just take this thing for what it is. Like I said, this gun did come with a 10 round magazine and a 12 round extended magazine. I'm gonna load these things up, put a couple of rounds through it, and I will come back and give you guys my first mag impression. All right guys, back for my first mag impression of the 365. The first thing that I would like to address is what I said about it in the past. After five shots, I said that this thing was snappy. It felt a little bit more snappy than the 43, but just after 12 rounds right there, I think this thing is actually pretty damn manageable. I really had no problem hitting all 12 shots on target from about eh, maybe 20 yards or so. The grip is a little bit small, so it is kind of weird to get a nice full grip on here, especially when you're used to something like a Glock 19 or an M&P full size. But even with this small grip, and especially if you are using the 12 round extended magazine, I can just barely sneak my pinky on there and get a firm grip and basically keep pretty good control over this whole gun. Now I'll start from the top down with the sights. Being that the gun is very small, it's obviously a very short sight radius, so I will definitely have to get used to drawing from my holster with this and getting out on target. But even out here in the very bright desert, the front green post there is still very easy to pick up. The rear dots in the back do seem a little bit small for night sights. I mean, I guess if you are in a very dark environment, pitch black house, I think they would light up okay. And I'm actually also used to a black serrated rear with no dots at all, so that is a nice touch in there, especially when it's tritium in both the front and the rear. 
Now for the slide and basically the overall design of this gun, I really have kind of like a love-hate relationship with it. It looks like it would be a full-size gun until you put it up against your hand and realize just how small this thing actually is. The front serrations are very nice, although they're a little bit shallow. I wish more manufacturers would be putting front serrations on all of their guns. The gun may seem a little bit top heavy in my hand when comparing it to a 43. It almost feels like my XDS-9 felt. But like I said, as long as you are running the 12 round extended mag in here, getting a grip on there and managing that is really not an issue. With the 10 round magazine, you do get a little bit of a pinky extension on there, but it really isn't quite enough. I much prefer the 12 rounder. Here you can sort of see a size comparison there. You definitely get a little bit more real estate with the 12 round magazine. The back of my hand hangs off a little bit. I can get my pinky on there, but like I said, I would go with the 12 round magazine if I would ever end up carrying one of these. The texturing feels good, really nothing to write home about there. It's not overly aggressive, but it's not the most grippy thing in the world. Since this gun is basically designed for concealed carry, here I have it in a QVO more discreet holster. This is original multi-cam over neon yellow. The part of the gun that is going to be rubbing up against my abdomen is right here, and it's really not that bad. Definitely way less aggressive than my current carry gun, the MNP 2.0. And when this thing is rubbing up against my stomach, really don't even notice that it's there. While the gun is small, all of the controls are very easy to access. The magazine button seems pretty positive. They are metal magazines, so they slide out of there no problem at all. And then you have the slide stop over here, really not too hard to actuate with just one hand. Overall, I think the design is pretty good for what it is, and the only thing left to do is really shoot it more, put it through its paces, and then I will come back and give you guys my final impression. With a small gun like this specifically built with EDC in mind, typically you would not be taking shots with it over about 30 yards or so. So you guys know I like to test stuff like this. Let's go back even further than you would typically be shooting in a self-defense situation and see if I can still land shots. Yeah, about 25, 30 yards, no problem at all. Let's go back even further. How about 40, 45 ish? All right, no problem with accuracy. I would keep on continuing going backwards because we have miles out here, but there's really no point in wasting ammo. Roger has actually never even shot his own gun before, so let's get his opinion on it too.
Time for a quick mag dump. Man. Guess we'll need a bonus mag. All right guys, back for my final thoughts on the SIG P365. The only thing I really haven't covered yet is the trigger, so let's get into that. The trigger on this thing is actually fairly nice. Take up to the wall is nice and smooth. There's really no sponginess or grittiness there. Feels like many other SIG triggers that I've shot in my life. Back into the wall, very easy to find, and then a little bit of creep right up to the brake. The reset, slowly let out. Tactile, audible. For a stock trigger, I would say that that is very good, almost better than a lot of the competition out there, and you're right back at the wall for another break. Now, instead of me just giving my opinion on this, I'm gonna bring Roger in here as well, since it was his first time shooting this gun. Basically, I just wanted to talk about this thing as the gun comes right out of the box and then comparing it to everything else that's out there, so what do you have to say about it? Um, like you were talking about before, the Glock killer, um, I would just say, in the sub-compact market, if I had to give this gun a slogan, it would be buy once, cry once. I run typically an MP shield, but after everything I got into it, it's like a thousand dollar gun now. Between trigger and serrations and Cerakote and extended mags and all the bells and whistles. And that goes the same with Glocks too. How many times do you see a stock Glock 43 out there? Not very often. I'm sure the majority of you guys out there don't run your Glock stock, and I'm, I'm talking like, you buy a 43, uh, let's go conservative, uh, 450 out the door maybe, throw sights on it, that's easily 70 to 100 bucks. Throw a trigger, decent trigger's gonna run you 150 bucks. Base plate to compete with something like this. $600, yeah, the price point for some right off the bat is like, whoa, it's a little, it's a little pricey. But when you think about everything you're getting, like everything, the trigger out of the box is actually pretty dang nice. It is very nice It's a trigger. super light break. Resets crisp right there. The reset is so springy that it forces your finger right back to it. As soon as you ease off the pressure on the trigger, you'll feel it push it and right there. The resistance that you're pressing on the trigger stops it right where it needs to go. So shooting from reset, which I know some people are frowned upon, um, sorry, it's the way I've shot for years, but it makes it super easy. So I think out of the box for 600 bucks, you're getting three mags, two 10 rounders, one 12 rounder. The things that I would change, I would just buy a second 12 round mag. Um, am I gonna switch over to this for my shield? Honestly, probably not. The reason I carry my shields is because I have multiple shields. Um, I don't carry this because it's used in the holster, or it's used in our shop all every day to fit your guys' holsters. So I agree with pretty much everything Roger just said. I don't really have a whole lot more to add. Like I said in the beginning, I would much rather be carrying this thing with the 12 round mag. You just get a better purchase on it. As far as the Glock killer thing goes, like I said, I don't think any gun out there is going to be a Glock killer as a blanket term. However, would I choose this over my Glock 43? I think that I would. I mean, I already own the 43, but if I were to go back and shoot both of these side by side, I think that I would lean towards this, especially with the capacity. I'll roll on a shot here of this gun right next to the Glock 43, the Shield, the XDS9, and as you can see, this thing fits the footprint of all of those guns. It might be a little bit wider, but you get the double stack magazine, much more capacity, and I think it is a very good option for anyone out there who's looking for a small, lightweight, compact gun as an EDC. Did this thing appeal to me enough to replace my M&P 2.0 that I've been carrying right now? No, I mean, I just prefer a bigger gun. I can carry it. I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I just feel more comfortable having a full grip to grab onto when I'm going to draw from concealment. I still think it is a good option if you really can't carry a full-size gun or something like the 19 or the compact. Now, as far as the reliability issues and everything goes, Roger did add this to his lineup about, what, three months ago? Yeah. So this may have missed that whole recall that SIG originally had. I believe this gun would be fine. I mean, I didn't notice anything with the firing pin, obviously. We only put around 200, 250 rounds down. So basically just take everything that we're saying with a grain of salt. These are just our opinions and maybe this will work out for someone like you out there. I feel like the point behind you guys watching these videos and why I've watched Talon's videos is something that's said, seen, or done in his video is going to either help you go out and make the decision to get said gun or not get said gun. So hopefully that, that goal is accomplished. Exactly. So that's about all that I had for today. Thank you to Roger for making this holster, letting me borrow his shop gun. If you guys order one of these holsters, this gun that I just shot today will be the one in your holster being test fit. And if you guys want to pick up a holster just like this or anything else that they offer, I will leave a link and a discount code in the description down below. If you have any questions on this gun, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Oh, there goes the sun. We just lost the sun. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week and that's gonna be it for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.